These are really serious increases. Um, groceries in the past year, this is this is year over year numbers, this day compared to this day last year, groceries have increased by 11.9%. That's the biggest increase since 1979. Chicken specifically has increased by 17.4%. This is the largest ever. Restaurants, the prices at restaurants have increased by 9%, the largest ever. Airfare has increased by 37.8%. That's the largest since the largest increase since 1980. Rent is up over 5%. That's the largest increase since 1987. Electricity, 12%. Fuel and oil, over 107% increase. And services in general have increased almost 6%. This is also the largest since the largest increase since 1990. This is this is this is really awful stuff. And as we see this incredible inflation happening under the Biden administration because of choices the Biden administration is making, you have people associated with the Biden administration, in this case, Biden's climate czar. It is not an elected position. It's an appointed position. It is John Kerry claiming that um, we don't need to do anything, don't need to do the obvious things that would solve gas prices, for example, and inflation, that we don't need to take these actions and that we shouldn't fall for, uh, for Republican suggestions. And energy security worry is driving a lot of the thoughts now about, oh, we need more drilling of gas. We need more drilling of this. We need to go back to coal. No, we don't. We absolutely don't. And we have to prevent a false narrative from entering into this or, again, uh, pun intended, we are coming. No, we don't. He said, we don't need to drill for oil. We don't need to rely on coal when we have to prevent this false narrative. So first of all, it's easy for John Kerry to sit there and say this when he's flying in private jets all over the world. I mean, he, he's one of the people who flies into Davos, to the World Economic Forum, in a private jet to lecture the world about climate change. He's part of this group, this cohort, that tries to impose policies on everybody, not just not, not just from a governmental sense, but from a global sense. I mean, he's one of these globalists who tries to impose all of this on us through ESG, the Environmental, Social, and Governmental Standards, um, that, that banking, the banking system, large investment firms, take into account when they give small businesses or individuals loans. If you don't rank well, according to the metrics of these environmental, social, and governmental guidelines that are put into place by people like John Kerry, they want you to take into account, well, what's your position on abortion? What's your, what's your position on, 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 on gay rights? What's your, what's your opinion on climate change? And what's the, what actions have you taken? How are you factoring these, these social or environmental or governmental issues into your business plan? And if, if you as an individual or a small business don't adhere to these types of standards, then these large investment firms are, aren't going to lend you money. You're not going to be able to start your business. So it's easy for John Kerry to sit there and say, oh, we don't need to, we don't need to you know, rely on fossil fuels. We don't need to drill for oil. We don't need to use coal-powered energy. He's an enormous hypocrite. He, he's setting rules that he wants to impose on us and he himself is not, is not willing to follow them. He actually has already shown us that he's willing to hurt us. The thing is, it, it, it's, it's not a false narrative. When he says we can't allow this false narrative to take hold, it's uh, he's lying. He's lying to us because it's absolutely 100% true that if Biden drilled for oil, if Biden had not shut down the pipelines, if, if Biden had created a stable energy policy so that investors, the oil and gas companies, actually had confidence in making investments and didn't think, well, if I spent millions, tens of millions, maybe even billions of dollars on these federal leases, you know, how do I know that I'm not going to spend this money? And then a year down the line, two years down the line, a month down the line, the Biden administration is going to change the regulations and I'm not going to be allowed to reap the benefits of my investment. I'm just going to lose all that money. So they're obviously hesitant. They obviously don't have the, the, the confidence to make these investments. So the Biden administration could drill for oil. They could have, they could have not shut down the pipelines. They could create some stability in this market and it would make an enormous difference. They could not rely on foreign oil. They could, we could rely on our resources here. It's not a false narrative to say that these things would impact gas prices. What the Biden administration and John Kerry are trying to do is they're trying to blame what, what, what has been wrought by the Biden administration's choices, meaning this, these, these high gas prices, on Vladimir Putin. And that's absolutely wrong. So when, when, you, when you zoom out then and you look at Texas, you look at the 34th congressional district, you look at the fact that, that Myra Flores won, that she's the first Republican to represent this district since 1870. This, this, this district, which has the second highest number percentage of Hispanic and Latino voters compared to any other of the 435 congressional districts. There's only one in California that has more Latino voters than this district. Is it any wonder? 
Is it any wonder that that Latinos are looking at Joe Biden and saying, why would I vote for you? Why would anybody vote for you? You are hypocrites. You're lying. Your policy is hurting us. It's hurting us at the gas pump. It's hurting us at the kitchen table. And not only are you not doing anything to fix it, you're, you're, you're playing this rhetorical game, trying to blame it on things, on other issues, just to try to manipulate our emotions about, you know, Russia and Ukraine, for example. And of course, people aren't stupid. This is what the Biden administration thinks. They think that we, the voters, are, are stupid. They think that they can just manipulate us and they can't.